Welcome to Astrophotography. This hobby is all about taking pictures of objects in deep space. To do that we use telescopes instead of camera lenses because they have many benefits. But which telescope should you get when starting out in this amazing hobby? In this video I will go over the many different types of telescopes and how good they are for astrophotography. If you've followed me around for some time you may already know which type of telescope I'm recommending. But let's start with a telescope type that you will see very often on star parties. Dobsonian. 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 Not a Dobsonian. 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 A Dobson telescope is just a spherical mirror inside a tube. Pretty easy. You can look through it from the side and move the entire thing by hand to find your targets in the night sky. I've tried out many different Dobsons on the ITV a year ago and looking through them is an awesome experience. Looking through them is really nice. And you can of course slap a camera on the side. But there is one big problem. To do long exposures at night the telescope needs to track the night sky. No chance of doing that by hand. You will just shake the image to death. To track the galaxy properly, you need an equatorial mount along with your scope of choice. It will track the object without tilt. A tilt that you would see on a mount like this, an altitude azimuth mount. Without an EQ mount, the object will change its orientation as it moves through the sky, making photography almost impossible. Using a Dobson for astrophotography is not a good idea. They are amazing at visual observing though and they can achieve very high focal lengths for not that much money. So you just have to put that Dobson telescope on an EQ mount. Well, such a combination is called a Newtonian. Now we have the mirror telescope on an EQ mount which can track the night sky and an object of your choice for hours. Slap a camera on there and you are ready to go. Just like a Dobson, a Newtonian telescope is great for visual observing, but they can also be used for astrophotography and I have seen many great images taken with Newtonian telescopes. A Newton is not very hard to use and they come in all different sizes. They are light and therefore very portable and can achieve long focal lengths with ease. I'm talking 1000 mm plus. The ratio of focal length to price makes them a good choice if you want high magnification. You will find the same combination of main and secondary mirror, just like the Dobson, which need to be aligned to work properly. Your manufacturer will do that for you, but you won't get around doing it by yourself from time to time. With the right tools such a collimation is not that hard. A Newtonian is a good telescope for astrophotography and a good telescope for beginners. But if you want to start with a short focal length, which I recommend, a small Newton will be overkill, if not bad, because of the collimation aspect. From 300 to 800 mm, a telescope made out of glass lenses will produce way better images. And this is where my favorite type of telescope enters the room. A refractor is a combination of glass lenses in a tube, basically a very large telephoto lens. But if you want to shoot deep sky objects, they are way better than camera lenses. Compact in size, portable and very easy to use. You don't need to collimate such telescope, they will basically never lose their adjustment. The camera is placed right in the back and after focusing your target you can start taking images with this scope. It's that easy. But the main reason why they are so popular is the price. Depending on size and quality, your first refractor can start at around 400 bucks. Just imagine what a camera lens at 420mm would cost. And the quality won't be the same either. Refractors can easily be fitted with more equipment to make your images better. They are portable, easy to use and just fun to work with. You don't need a gigantic telescope. Those objects out there are gigantic. Speaking about big telescopes. Now we move on to the more advanced types of telescopes. The problem with glass and mirror telescopes, they suffer from aberration, distortion in the field and in the sharpness, and of course in the color. The solution is a scope made out of both glass and a mirror. A Schmidt-Cassegrain telescope starts with a glass element in the front and a main mirror in the back. 
They are usually used in planetary photography and can be very large, heavy, a whole lot to work with. A mount that can carry such a scope has to be very robust and therefore expensive. I do not recommend an SC scope for beginners. I always think that a beginner wants something that's quick to set up, portable and easy to use. And an SC telescope is the exact opposite. The last telescope I want to introduce has a tongue twister in its name and is as hard to use as to pronounce, in my opinion. The Ricci Correction Telescope is a special type of the Newtonian. The light is caught by a main mirror in the back, but the secondary mirror does not reflect it to the side, but straight back out of the back. This configuration can achieve a very high magnification at a rather low weight and cost. I have an RC, but I never used it. The reason for that, and I don't want to scare you away, I was never able to collimate this thing properly. It's that hard. If you've never used a telescope before, an RC will be very hard to use, but not impossible. They are extensively used for astrophotography. And like the Newtonians, they create spikes around bright stars. Quite cool to look at. At a focal length of more than 1000 mm, the strain on your mount to track the object perfectly is very high. And that's the point where my recommendation for beginners says... Wah -wah. Again, you don't need big focal lengths to image the night sky. Advanced photographers can create amazing images with these telescopes. But a beginner will most likely have no fun with this. If you are starting out right now, if you want to enter this amazing world of astrophotography, your biggest enemy will be clouds. And to keep the motivation going, you want something easy to use that will produce a result in the first night. And even if that result is not a perfect image on the first try, just seeing some stars on the back of a camera screen is an amazing experience. You maybe want to take this equipment into the field to make use of a small clear window in the clouds. That's the point where you want something small, compact, lightweight, but powerful. And the telescope that combines all of these things is the refractor. You don't need to spend an entire grand on your first telescope, like I did. A small doublet or triplet will be more than enough, and they start at around 500 bucks. I hope I was able to guide you in your journey in astrophotography, and that you will have fun with the telescope you choose. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. In the time since the last video, which was also the last clear night, I was able to create a merchandise store and a Discord channel for the community. Check out the links in the description to get even more astro imaging in your life. And as for me, my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.